Bob Snow White here. I'm going to go over what I talked about in the podcast. This is a visual cue and visual aids for you to see the flies that I tie, which I've laid out here, and the materials here. So we're going to go over first bucktail. I mentioned in the podcast that I bought these in Massachusetts. I meant to say that I got these at Bear's Den, not Goose Hummock, so I had to edit that out. So what I'm looking for are soft, long, thin fibers. This is a Brilliant yellow that I've not seen anywhere else. Some of these get a little coarse, but this is the one I've been cutting up mostly for my clousers. Soft, thin, blue. There's not a lot of crinkle to them. They're straight, they're wispy and long. And that allows me to tie my blue and white clousers, which I love to fish on the Potomac. We'll be throwing these tomorrow, hopefully for some stripers. And you can see, lightly dressed, and it has that lance-like shape to the fly, number one. Next up are cocktails and schlappen. So this is a rooster tail, and you can see these long fibers in there. That's what I'm looking for when I'm tying my hackle on my bacon fly, or I'm tying up some of my articulated largemouth flies for the Potomac. This is a really old one, and I'm still using it probably 15 years later, because uh, I like this one. Brilliant color chartreuse. So for that, I'm going to be tying on my curly tail peanut here, the collar. It's going to be like the, the mane on a big lion. And that's articulated, and that is in fire tiger. And that is a twin to some that are going out today to a client. We're going to go over some of the other materials in that soon. One of the few flies I will tie with the second hook in the back. But I want large, bushy hackle on there to push water as this darts and moves back and forth. There's an actual fly in the house while I'm going over flies. I'm guessing someone left the door open this morning. Next up is foam. I'm a huge fan of foam. One of the first ones I mentioned is two millimeter foam that I've been cutting out for large Chernobyl ants to send out to a client. I use this folded over in my scorpion buds. I also make, I get Chernobyl ants, little ants, little beetles, etc. The next up is the round foam I use for my frogs. You can cut pieces about that big and make really good Chernobyl ants, or you can fold it over like that, make a frog body. It's more of a Mead's gutless frog if you're gonna epoxy it together like that. It comes in 24 inches, it's about $6. Next up is the copper pipe insulation foam from Home Depot. Look how thick that is. It's super buoyant, a lot of air cells in there. And if I were gonna cut this into a mouse, I would take this and about this, and I would tie that down. It comes into a piece that looks like a bull noodle. If you pull these off, it's adhesive. You don't wanna do that, it's really sticky. But this stuff will not sink. Beetles, ants, grasshoppers, whatever. So what I'm gonna make with those, my scorpion bug. This is my go-to top water largemouth fly. It's pretty simple, and now I've got the mold to cut these out a little bit better. Going to be tying up my splat wrap with the insulation foam. This is Blue Guard on 30-pound mine. I don't know if they think it's a mouse, but it works. Bluegill will come up and hit it. Next up would be my version of the gutless frog. You can see that it rides hook up and the secret is epoxy here and epoxy here, which keeps it on the hook. Absolutely amazing pattern. Goes great along brush, over trees, lily pads. Should be, should be weedless. Also I mentioned in the podcast, my articulated dragonfly, which is made from two millimeter foam. So that is it right there. This one's a little beat up, but it wiggles, and you can bend the tail to make it land however you want. Just like it. It's made to get destroyed. This is not some wussy, feather-winged dragonfly. This is uh, beefy rubber legs and foam, and it's made to get crushed by fish. Next up is Crystal Flash Chenille. I picked this one out from my pack because it's brill brilliantly pink. And you can see how it's got that 365 roundness to it. So when you wrap it, 
makes a nice shiny bulky body. It comes in a bunch of colors. You can get this at your local fly shop. I use it in several patterns, namely my Snallygaster worm. So this is just a big bass worm with a paddle tail and a skirt on it. This one's already been fished. I pulled it out of a box today. It's got a non-slip mono loop on it so it wobbles more. But you can see how that will slink and snake through the water. And it's got the paddle on it to push water and the rubber legs. Lots of action and movement in this fly. Snallygaster. It's named after a mythological creature that would take children out of their beds in the mountains of the Potomac to play with. Next up is Marabou. So this is a pack I got from Bob Marriott. If you've been listening to the podcast for 10 years, you remember when I bought this. I'm still using it. And what I've gone through and picked out are the really good, long, webby ones like this. This is what I'm looking for when I'm going to pommel it. You can use the stiffer, shorter ones for woolly bugger tails like this. It's not useful to me except for woolly bugger. And I will go through these one by one. This has taken me seven years, eight years now, to go through. It makes a mess, though. The kitchen counter is covered in marabou. So what I'm going to tie with that is the Bass Popsicle. Again, when you get this one wet, it has a perfect knife blade lance shape to it, and it looks like a bait fish in the water. And it'll pulse, and it'll swim back and forth. This is a great striper fly, great largemouth fly makes a mess to tie, and it's just one, two, three pieces of marabou, palmer forward, dumbbell eyes, two half hitches, and you're done. Very simple pattern, but look at the, the motion of it. Next up on my list are puffer balls. So I got this one from Safeway a couple years ago. These are the long and tapered fibery pieces that I like. Also, this is the ghost puffer ball I bought at Michael's years ago. Notice how long and tapered those wormy legs will be. So when I tie my worm, it's going to come out like this. It's going to be a long tapered fly, and when you move it in the water, it goes like this. Crazy effective. If your client or you do not care about the flies you're fishing to catch fish, this might be one of the best warm water patterns I've come up with. And it has, if you can see it, little metal wire wrapped shanks. So when I wrap the clear model filament in, it sets the material. It's stretchy. The little fish are going to pull on it. They're going to try and swim away with it. But you need a bigger fish to slurp it up. Fantastic, fantastic pattern. Those are my puffer balls. Next up, I have zonker strips, and specifically barred zonker strips. So I use zonkers in a lot of material. This is a magnum one, so it's a little thicker on the hide, and it's already barred. So I'm going to use this on my bunny reefers. Instead of limiting myself with the very few colors of tails available for Pat Eller's fly, I decided to go with multiple colors. Then I can mix and match my patterns. So I have black and orange weed guarded bunny reefer here. And the reason I'm going thicker is when the marabou gets wet, it gets super slim. So the thicker the marabou, the fatter the paddle kind of tail will be. Again, you can see I'm also using UV polar chenille, rubber legs, and 30 pound bomb. We'll get to this fly in a moment. I like zonkers for tails on woolly buggers. It's easier and cleaner than using marabou. And you can also just tie two inches of this to a hook and catch a fish. If you've ever seen my old business card with that 24-inch rainbow, it was a 3-inch long piece of black zonker tied behind Dumbo eyes on a size 4 streamer hook. Pretty stupid fly to catch the biggest non-migratory rainbow of my life. That is zonkers. And I prefer to buy these in stores because I can see the color motifs and what colors over what and where the barring is. It's one of those things, natural materials, I prefer to buy in stores. Synthetic hackle. I use this a lot. This is scrubby yarn from Lotte, and all of this was $6 and change. And this is an absolutely brilliant color. Right now, I'm using it on the backs of my poppers right here instead of feathers. Stupid easy popper. We'll get to that in a moment. 
I also am a big fan of synthetic eyelash yarn like this. It is super easy to tie in. It doesn't have to go in any specific direction. It's very durable. And again, you're going to get a ball like this for $4. And it's got little metallic tinsel in it. I've got this black, pink, purple, olive, brown, copper, pearl. I've got a whole storage bin of this downstairs. I'm going to use that in woolly buggers. This one's fairly beaten up. This is the fly that caught me my biggest smallmouth of all time. I was showing clients how to fish a woolly bugger, and the big smallmouth came up and absolutely crushed it. It still has marabou bent from having a dropper hook on it. But there you go. One of the quickest ways to tie a really nice woolly bugger, and then the body on it is just super, super fishy looking. Synthetic hackles for bass flies. Next up is rubber legs. I've got two kinds, your generic round rubber legs, which is the same material that keeps your underwear and socks up. This is what I use on Chernobyl ants. I use this on my smaller hula girls, gutless frogs, you can make just a single worm if you watch Tim Flagler's videos. You can take a piece like that and tie that to a hook, the son of the San Juan worm. I don't know if you can see that. It's just one little piece. Very useful. Again, a material that if it gets in UV light will get degraded. So keep your flies out of the sunlight. Just like the puffer balls, they're going to melt. My other favorite type of rubber legs are these kind. This is what I'm using for my fire tiger right now. These will melt in the sun and degrade. And this is just called a skirt. And they come in 20 to 30 different colors, flecked, non-flecked, barred, non-barred. I buy these in bulk when I can. Again, I prefer to see the colors in person. So buy them in person because you don't always know the colors you're ordering online. Except if you go to Kelly Gallup's website, he actually breaks down all the colors and you can see them there. Next up is tinsel. I use this stuff a lot in my shad flies and tails on other patterns. It's just a really durable, easy to use material. It's just Christmas tinsel. And I mentioned on the podcast that this is the original extra limp, and there's the color, 6925, if you want to buy the same one from Flashadoo. Now, I'm going to use that in my shad jig. Bass eat it, so we fish it for largemouth, too. It goes up, and the tail moves with it. Very good fly. Always throw a Snow White Damsel behind it. One of the easier flies you're ever going to tie. 132-ounce jig head. S-Taz, not Crystal Flash Chenille. Tinsel tail. I tie these in pink, blue, white, chartreuse. Northern light. This is a fantastically inexpensive material. I use this in my bass siren, which I might rename the bass umbrella. You can see it's just super limp. It's got a nice crinkle to it. So you can tie this in and your thread will grip it. Comes in a variety of colors. The website does not make it that easy to see all the colors. But this is silver hot purple. This is pink orange. And the fly I tie with it is my bass siren. So you can see when I want things to move like an umbrella, you strip it, all of this goes back, the tail moves, you let it sink. This is fly is almost neutrally buoyant. So you strip it, let it drop, tail's going to curl, strip it again, and this is going to pulse like a jellyfish moving in the water. And this is just tied in at the halfway point and cinched down behind the cone. Ridiculously easy to tie. You can see crystal flash chenille, and you can see the hook in the back is broken off. And you can color these however you want. This is tied on a, a one to two odd bass hook. Brass cone head, no extra weight added. Very cool fly, very effective. You can just see how that material is going to move. What do we have next? Flat diamond braid. So the body on that, just like I would tie an intruder, is flat diamond braid. And flat diamond braid looks like this. It, again, is probably from tying ribbons on your 
Christmas presents, Black Diamond Braid. Comes in a variety of colors, makes good sucker spawn, makes just good filler. I also use it on my Hula Girl. So this is the first time you're seeing my Hula Girl. This isn't Chartreuse. This is the Hula Girl. It is one of the cooler looking flies and ridiculously easy to tie. I'm a big fan of using the new Solar Res colors at the top. So you can see how I'm using rubber legs here, hook broken off. There is the flat diamond braid, crystal flash anneal, rubber legs, and dumbbell eye. One of the cooler patterns I have come up with. Please fish this. I will be making a tutorial for this in the umbrella very soon. Ultra Suede is next. I just happened to grab the Pat Cohen Cut Yourself. So you can get this and cut your own with sharp scissors. It's not as difficult as people say it is. I like to draw on them with a automatic pencil and then I cut them with my scalpel. You can also get Easter Trophy, Curly Tails, and White to color your own. And then Pat Cohen also has his Paddle Tails which are awesome. This one is just a little too big for this one that I tied at a show and didn't sell. So this would be a Reaper with a Pat Cohen tail in white that I colored myself. Pretty darn cool fly. Okay, we have UV Polar Chenille and I grabbed the longer one, this is up at the Orvis down the street and these are nice long fibers so when you wrap these make sure you push back every time you wrap and you can build up a really nice body run a comb over that or a piece of velcro that's how you make the underlying bodies on reaper flies really cool stuff very durable stiff nylon fibers I bought this years ago at the fly fishing show, and you can see I really have only used a little bit in all of the numerous scorpion bugs I've tied. It's stiff, it ties in really easily, it's crinkly, and it sort of helps balance the scorpion bug. So this tail is a little bent from being inside a box, but when they're straight, they're going to lay flat like that on the water. and. You can also use this for synthetic clouds or some nylon. You can see where they melted it. And then last is going to be Widow's Web. This is Widow's Web. Really awful stuff. I will drag a hook through it. Oh, I didn't do poppers yet. I'll come back to poppers. You can drag a hook through it and it's just gets caught on everything. So in a gar, when a gar bites one of these flies, here somewhere. So when a guard bites one of these, they're going to have to bite it this way, and then they have to swallow it head first. So as it rotates in their mouth, all of those little fibers get caught in its teeth. Large mouth will absolutely eat this too. It took a while to figure this fly out, and there's always a hook in it because, like I said, we caught the biggest bass of the year last year on one of these. A little bit of flash in there. Guard don't seem to care about the colors. We might go target guard tomorrow. It hasn't rained in a week, and the river should be clear. So I also mentioned double barrel poppers by Flyman Fishing Company. We're going to tie these at the next July TPFR beer tie in size small on a BS10 stinger hook. So you can tie it in this way, this way, this way, or this way. Poke a hole in it. Make sure you wrap your thread with super glue, stick it on, then tie in synthetic for the body and then flash me for the tail. So it looks like this. I then put rubber legs through it with the leg puller. And this is the go to top water fly right now to put a dropper below. We're doing purple worms. It's pretty standard, pretty accurate. I think that is it for all the materials I have out here. Those are the flies. I will tie up some now. I'll get those tutorials online. So thanks for watching. Here's my list. You can read that. I want to screenshot.
Thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to this on YouTube. Please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes. And I just found my Helgramite. So that's my Snow White Helgramite right there. I wanted to show you that. I did not bring any Helgramite yarn out, but it is available on my website. $4 a yard. Black is 20 This is not black. Black is ultra rare, and I don't even use it for myself. But that is my Helgramite based on the Bill Skilton one. Thank you.